Okay, okay, welcome back, shoemakers, to one more bespoke. We are continuing in our quest to create high heel shoes in our course of High on Heels. And in the last class, we started out with trying to make this boot. We created the mean form. So, this is the mean form that we created in the previous class. And if you are confused as to how we got here, I will recommend that you go back and view the video before this one so this is the main form now in order to start creating our boot patterns we would have to factor in the heel heights that we discussed in the previous class so let's just mark a right angle and then mark in the heel height remember that the heel height of this boot is of the last is 7.5 cm so we mark 7.5 cm on the vertical line of the right angle that we drew. Then we place the heel on that um, heel height mark and place the ball on the horizontal line and then draw in our main form. Being careful also to mark out the counterpoint, the van point, and of course the ball was there. We connect the van point to the ball and have our vamp line measure the vamp line and divide it into two then our quarter line will draw in by connecting the counterpoint to the middle of the vamp line that we drew let's just go ahead and mark in our instep of course we found our instep in the previous class which is one fourth of the last length now this is where the boot specific things start happening first of all we draw a line from the heel to the ball and then from the instep we will draw another line parallel to the previous line we drew so this line running from the instep is parallel to the one running from the heel to the ball then we'll draw a line from the heel to the instep measure that line and divide it into two the figure we got by dividing that distance between the heel and the instep into two we will mark on the second parallel line that we drew and then draw a right angle from the baseline through that that point so this line running from the baseline through the point half the distance from the heel to the instep on the second parallel line that we drew is the center of gravity of this boot really and it is from on this line that we will calculate how tall or how short this boot will be now look at the top of this boot here i notice that it's about three or four cm removed from the uh, instep so if i draw a perpendicular line from the vertical right angle line that we drew before to pass through that instep the point where it intersects with our center of gravity line i can actually mark in about 4 cm and that will be indicative of where i can draw in the top line of this my ankle boot now pay attention this is an ankle boot and the top line of an ankle boot should actually factor in what is called the ankle dirt which is the circumference around the ankle of the wear of the boot i have no specific wear for this boot this is a boot that i'm just making for the purposes of this class so I'm basically using what I have on the last. But when you're creating it for your customer, it is important that you pay attention and measure the circumference around the ankle, marked D in this case. And that is called the ankle girt. So how should I use the measurement of the ankle girt in my pattern? Well, you see that center of gravity line where it um, dissects that line running from the counterpoint to the instep if i divide the ankle girt into four and on each side of that line i'm marking the said one quarter of the ankle girt that will come to half of the ankle girt on one side of the pattern such that by the time you duplicate the pattern it will, it will come to the full um, circumference of the ankle that way um, if you wanted the uh, ankle side of the boot to be exactly uh, to match of 
the circumference of the customer's ankle you would have achieved that otherwise you can add uh, one two three cm as the case may be or as you desire to give it some uh, allowance but let's get back to the picture that we are working with using the last of course you can also always use the last that you have especially if it's a boot last because um, many of these measurements are already factored into size so if the last is such that it's the size of uh, the customer then most dimensions you'd find on the last will um, work so now this is the front part of the ankle um, I've just moved about one or two cm away from the instep and drawn a vertical line from that point and then um, from the back height I draw a perpendicular line just so that I can have somewhere to incline if you take a look at the picture that we're working with you find that the back counterpart of the boot inclines downwards so I inclined from about three or two and a half cm basically from the top of the last I inclined downwards to to a point passing through our back height uh, perpendicular to the vertical line of our right angle and then um, touching the center of gravity line so I will incline from basically the top of the last just as you see that it inclines downwards on the picture I will incline downwards that way and then just use this as my reference for designing the back so basically this pattern is done really um, I basically add in the stitching allowances so as you can see the front part of the pattern is as you can see there so you can see that um, on the picture that we had it actually terminates just around about where the heel starts and I know that the measurement of heel is typically about one fourth of the last length so I found one fourth of that last length calculated it measured it from the heel and with that, I was able to draw in the back part of the counter. So let me outline the full pattern so that it becomes much more clear and apparent to you. So let's outline it clearly in ink and you'll see how everything turned out. Uh, it's still not very clear, but I guess by the time we cut out what is waste and what is the real pattern you'll be able to see it so ladies and gentlemen this is the standard pattern that we have uh, let's cut out all of the waste and from this standard we are going to be creating the different um, parts of our pattern so we're going to add all of our folding allowances stitching allowances and all whatnot but ladies and gentlemen, basically, this is the pattern. And we asked before why do i cut these um, channels they are tracing channels um, places where i can put my pen uh, if it is my final pattern where i can put my silver pen and trace in um, the pattern lines so let's cut out the front part the vamp part of this boot add a folding allowance at the top right there indicate also for ourselves where the back part slots in and even with that also um, indicates where the stitching allowance is where the back part will slot in so we cut that top remember that we added a folding allowance at the top so that we don't have a raw edge when we are um, fixing in our leather of course we've not added a lasting allowance so let's go ahead and add about 1.5 
p.m. of lasting allowance. So our lasting allowance added and that right there is the front part. So there it is, at the top right there is a folded allowance, at the side is teaching allowance and then beneath a lasting allowance. So let's do the back part, basically do exactly the same thing. We'll add a folded allowance at the top, add our lasting allowance beneath. This is, that's the folding allowance at the top and this is basically it right here so you see that it will slot in that way and this boot is such that there's a zip at the back i've never made a boot with a zip at the back i'm excited to see how this turns out